What up, YouTube? All to the double E dash the ZON coming at you once again, and I'm doing a brand new video. Matter of fact, this might be a series. It's definitely going to be more than one video because I got a lot to say. We're going to be going over a group of games that is my favorite group of games in the last decade, like hands down. And if not my favorite, it's, a, it's up there. I consider this to be a trilogy, <clears throat> even though it technically is not. And I'm just going to get it right out of the way and show you all the games lined up. We're talking about Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X, and Mortal Kombat 11. I got Mortal Kombat 9 on the PS3, MKX on PS4, and you all know I got that MK11 on the Switch, baby. I consider this a trilogy, man, because it's really it's really the first and only three games of Mortal Kombat under the NetherRealm uh, title, under NetherRealm Studios. Uh, and it's also the only three so far that we have in the NetherRealm storyline and in in, in their timeline and that continuity. Whereas the original one through Armageddon were all under Midway. One second. So yeah, man, I wanted to talk about these games because in light of the recent release of Mortal Kombat 11 and how just amazing that game is, uh, it got me thinking, man, about how, how I have enjoyed Mortal Kombat, not just since 1992 or 93 or whenever it was that it debuted, but especially under NetherRealm Studios. I know it's the same people. I know it's a boom. It's the same team. <clears throat> but ever since they became another realm, and they took over this and, and took it from a whole new perspective, getting back to the roots of the 2D fighting with the 3D backgrounds, uh, adapting this uh, or adopting, I should say, this brand new cinematic movie like story mode in which you get to play as all or not all several of the different characters and different fighters going through the story mode. You get to play as most of them, and the ones you don't get to play as, you come in contact with and are there and involved. Gives it a more cinematic, more epic, movie-like feel. Uh, ever since they did that, and, and the games have just been phenomenal, man. I mean, like, I love Mortal Kombat. Y'all know, you've heard me say that from beginning to end. Mortal Kombat 1, all the way to now to 11. There, as far as the fighting games, there is not a bad one in the bunch, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what anybody says. I know people have problems with Mortal Kombat 4, for example. Uh, some people didn't like Mortal Kombat 3 because Scorpion wasn't there. They brought him back in Ultimate for you whiny little bitches. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. But yeah, like they, people have certain issues with certain titles within a certain of the fighting titles in the franchise. But in reality, they're all great fighting games. They're all Mortal Kombat. They're all phenomenal. But these three, man, I, I mean, I, I remember when I saw the reveal trailer when they first announced Mortal Kombat. Which is really Mortal Kombat 9, let's just be real, but they wanted to call it re they just want to call it Mortal Kombat to make it clear to everybody they are starting over. And that's really what this game did. And, and, and if I gotta be honest, I love the story mode in all the games, man. Uh, uh, 9, X, and Switch. Especially Switch. Oh my god, I'm Switch, one time. 11. Awesome story mode. But here's the thing though. If I had to pick one, the Ross one is Mortal Kombat 9. And why do I say that? Because it's Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, and into Armageddon all wrapped in one. It's just, it's such an epic, and it's the longest one by far because it's covering three to four different installments of the franchise. If you really think about it, it's covering part one, part two, part three. It doesn't really go into four, you know, or Deadly Alliance or Deception or anything like that. It has innuendos of those involved in the story, but really it goes one, two, three, all to, um, uh, Armageddon. That's basically what it does. And then it restarts. Uh, like Armageddon is the end of all things. And that's where they left it before they made this game. So they were like, how are we going to go forward with the story? How are we going to go forward? We've convoluted the story so much. We have 80 plus fucking characters in this franchise. All of which were playable in Armageddon, which was just fucking awesome. Uh, but how are we going to go forward? How are we going to remake this story? Or how are we going to evolve it? And my dudes, they did the best thing they could have done. They literally said, all right, let's go back to the beginning, tell the whole story right up until this Armageddon point, and then we're basically going to reboot the entire storyline. It's going to be a whole different timeline. So that's what they did. You're playing through Mortal, Mortal Kombat 9 story mode. opens up with Raiden at the top of the, the pyramid of Argus. I think it's Argus or Blaze. Blaze's pyramid in Armageddon. Where it's just him and Shao Kahn left. Everybody's fucking dead. Gone. Everybody's ripped apart. There's nobody left alive but those two. And they're going at it. And Shao Kahn's whooping the shit out of him. And Shao Kahn is about to kill him. And right before he kills him, right before he brings the hammer down on him, he basically, <clears throat> excuse me, he basically sends a, a message telepathically 
from himself right then and there in the present to his past self, all the way at the beginning of the first Mortal Kombat tournament, the first game that we've ever played, and sends himself a message saying he must win. That's all we know. We don't know who he is. And, and as it, the message goes back through time, you see flashes of all the different events that have happened through the history of Mortal Kombat. It's real epic, man. And then all of a sudden, all the flashes end, and you see you know, the, 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 the raiding of the past with Liu Kang and Kung Lao and everybody, and they're all standing in Shang Tsung's Island for the first tournament. Awesome, and the story takes off from there. You play as Johnny Cage, you play as Sony, you play as Liu Kang, you play as Kung Lao, you play as, uh, I believe, Raiden also. You play as, man, everybody, everybody. Sub-Zero, Scorpion, you play as all of them. And it's real epic the way it unfolds the story. And so you see the story of Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 unfolding. Shit that you know, that you remember from your childhood when you first played these games and the story happening. And you see Raiden trying to figure out what is it that he has to change so that Armageddon doesn't, isn't the result. So you'll see, you know, parts like, for example, just a quick, uh, quick mention. Uh, one of the parts is like, you know, when, when smoke goes from being human smoke to the cyberized smoke and the cybernetic Lin Kuei, when Raiden sees that they're about, the, the, the cybernetic ninjas are about to capture smoke, he interferes to stop that from happening. But when, when he knows that uh, uh, if Scorpion kills uh, the original Sub-Zero, he is going to become Noob Cyber and it's going to be worse. So he tries to prevent all these things. And some things he's... He's successful in preventing, and other things happen either way. And no matter what, he keeps looking at his amulet, and it keeps cracking, which signals to him, you haven't fixed the time flow. Things are still going to end up at Armageddon. So it's awesome the way the whole thing plays out, man. The thing about this game, man, is that while I had a blast in the 3D era Mortal Kombat, I did. I fucking love Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon. I love those games. I think they are phenomenal 3D fighters. I think they're very well structured, very well built. Controls are awesome. The graphical engine they were using for that time was beautiful, man. It gave Mortal Kombat more of a, a beefy, uh, kind of like a fantasy type look because they looked like comic book characters, but there was also this hint of realism, such as, you know, like they would have battle damage while they were fighting and you know, and the gore was always there. And the fact that, like, for example, I, I, I think it was all three titles, but I'm for sure in Deadly Alliance. Remember Mortal Kombat games? How, you know, you bam, you hit him and the blood comes out and the blood hits the floor, but then it, like, dissolves? Nah, <laughs> in Deadly Alliance, bro, you had a blood splatter arena, dude. It was like whatever drops of blood fell on the ground, they stayed there. I don't know how, what memory wizardry they used to make the memory in the, in, the, in the systems of that time, the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox original, be able to hold that there while the fight was still happening. But there was blood everywhere, and it never dissolved. So that was like an element of realism to me that I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. Or you would stab somebody, and you would see blood dripping down their body as they were fighting. It, they tried to, like, really push it. I enjoyed those games. I thought they were phenomenal. But after three of those, and the last one being Armageddon, which was just so packed. Full of, full of characters, full of stages, and dude, they had everything. It had creative fighter, creative fatality, it had motor combat, it had freaking uh, chess combat, it had fucking everything. It was time to go back to something more basic, more back to the roots of what this franchise was. And what this franchise was from day one was a 2D fighter, fighter versus fighter, with just incredible, unparalleled brutality. And not just in the fatalities and stuff like that, but in the hits, in the, in the combat, just bam, hard hitting. The, uh, introduced the x-ray moves for the first time ever in the franchise where you see somebody get hit in the ribs and the camera would zoom in and go beneath the skin and you would see the ribs crack or you would see the spleen rupture or whatever. Shit was brutal. It was awesome, dude. And then I like, got the back, it says right there, fatality lives. It damn sure does, man. When this game came up with the fatalities, it was like, yo, they're going back to the hardcore. No more silly fatality bullshit. No more Jax turning into a giant and stomping on you. No more Quan Chi and that giraffe neck stretch he did in Dudley Alliance. That, to this day, even, even Ed Boon says it's the worst thing he's ever done. He can't believe they let the game ship like that. None of that silly shit. Gore. Like, seriously brutal, disturbing fatalities. Awesome, man. So that's why I love this, because this, this just brought Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat had never left for me, but when this game came out, there wasn't a soul out there that was saying, eh, Mortal Kombat's old, it's stale. No, everybody was like, holy shit, have you seen the new Mortal Kombat? So this brought it back, man. And we move on to Mortal Kombat X. This is definitely going to be a, a, at least a two-part video. Mortal Kombat X. This one, what this one will, will be known for the most, most known for in the histories of video gaming, was the first time that Mortal Kombat, I don't want to say introduce new characters because they do that every installment, but 
Bye bye, bro. The first time they introduced a set of new characters that they were really going to entrust the story and the game to. They had never done that. They had never done that. They brought in Kung Lao and Mortal Kombat 2, Katana and Molina. They just became part of the cast. It was still about Liu Kang. It was still about Sub-Zero and Scorpion. You know, it was still about Shang Tsung, Shao Kahn. You know, they brought in Cabal and Shiva and Motaro and all them in Mortal Kombat 3. And then turned the story over to them. It was still about Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, you know, shit like that. Here they brought in Cassie Cage, uh, Takeda Takahashi, Kung Jin, and Jackie Briggs. Cassie Cage, daughter of Sonya and Johnny Cage. Uh, Jackie Briggs, daughter of Jax. Uh, Kung Jin, cousin of Kung Lao. If I'm not mistaken, for the first time, one of the first times I've ever seen a homosexual character in a game. And he was a fucking badass. Uh, he was a Kung Lao's cousin. And, um... Who's the other fucking other one? Oh, it's Akeda Takahashi. Badass. He is Kenshi's son. Kenshi the Blind Swordman, his son. But he was raised by Scorpion. Or by Hanzo uh, Hasashi. So, they, and, and they really made the story about these four. Sub-Zero is in it. Liu Kang is in it. All the main characters are there. But the story is not about them for the first time. Which I was like, I don't know if that's going to work. And it works beautifully. It works beautifully. This is, bro, um, this is, I, wanna, I forgot how many years after. It's tw- I think it's 25 years after the ending of Mortal Kombat 9, right? So at the ending of Mortal Kombat 9, the only ones left alive are Johnny Cage, Sonya, and Raiden. That's it. Liu Kang, Jade, Katana, uh, Sub-Zero. Everybody has been killed, and the majority of them have been resurrected as revenants, undead, zombie-like uh, slaves to Quan Chi. Um, and so this is 25 years after that. So you have uh, the kids, the new Mortal Combatants, the new generation coming up. And Johnny Cage and Sonya are the special forces kind of teaching them, telling them what their mission is, telling them how they got to protect, protect Earth Realm. Still working with Raiden, but, you know, uh, they understand that, uh, that um, you know, all their friends are, are dead and they're enslaved by Quan Chi. So the story, and then you got Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei, they're out there in their temple in the Antarctic. And like, there's even a part in the story mode where uh, Johnny Cage tells Cassie to take her team, the four of them, the youngsters, go out there to the Lin Kuei. Because we got to see if Sub-Zero, the Grand Master, is still on our side. We haven't talked in years. And we're going to need him to take on this new threat. So they go out there. And Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei, the Sub-Zero mainly, just schools all four of them. Whoops the shit out of all four of them. And he's giving them advice while he's fighting them. He's telling Cassie Cage, like, he's like, oh, you lead these people, Cassandra, but they don't follow you. Until you fight as one, you ain't going to make it. Bah! Beats her ass wound. Jackie Briggs, oh, your passion and this and that, but you got to have discipline. Bah! Sir, beats the fuck out of all of them. Lines them all up so they can be executed. And then right then and there, when they think it's over, the Lin Kuei door temples open up and Johnny Cage is standing there like that. And Sub-Zero just looks back at him and like a little smirk. And they go, oh, shit, it was all a test. So they're all working together to, to bring up the youngsters to get ready for what, for what Mortal Kombat is about, man. So I'm going to leave it right there for part one. Coming back with part two, we'll keep covering MKX and then jump into MK11 and continue to go through my favorite group, my favorite trilogy of games in the last decade, straight up. God bless y'all. Stay game in peace.